Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Today we're going to continue using the TI-89 calculator. And I have to admit, this function of the calculator that we're going to explore today is really neat and can actually save you on an exam, uh, especially if you're dealing with trig functions. So what I'm talking about here is simplifying trigonometric expressions. We've all dealt with trig identities, you know, they're the double angle formulas, the half angle formulas. There's, there's literally pages and pages of trig identities. And, um, you know, the calculator has them all built in and can simplify um, lots of complicated trig expressions. And in fact, you can use the calculator to sort of um, regenerate any trig identity that you might need. So it's, it's really, really useful. What we need to do uh, is go into the algebra menu. I know it's a little odd going in the algebra menu for a trig uh, item, but if we scroll down, way down here, we're going to get to number nine, which is the trig menu. It's actually faster if you go into F2 and hit the up arrow and then you'll get there faster. So you go into the flyout for the trig menu. There are two functions here, which are the functions that we're going to explore in this section. One is called T expand and one is called T collect. They're both used to simplify trig expressions. So my advice to you really is I'm going to teach you the different ways and reasons that you would use these guys, but five months from now you might forget the details of how they work differently. So my advice to you is if you're trying to simplify a trig expression, uh, just try both of them and uh, if one of them won't work then it'll be pretty obvious and if the other one gives you something simpler, simpler back then uh, you're in good shape. So let's go work with T expand, trig expand. As you might guess it's going to attempt to expand uh, a trig expression that you type in here. All right. So what you're going to do is put trigonometric expressions in here meaning sine, cosine, tangent um, etc. So let's just do something really really simple. Let's go ahead and put the sine in here and uh, let's say you're having trouble remembering if you take sine of negative x how does that uh, you know work out? In other words x is an angle we could use theta here we'll do that here in a second but you know is this an even or an odd function? The sine function is an odd function. That means that if you if you stick something in with a negative sign then when you look at the graph you should be able to convince yourself what's going to happen is you're going to get a negative the negative value of what you otherwise would have gotten so if you if you're having a hard time remembering even an odd functions from trig you're having a hard time remembering what this identity is put it in t expand hit enter and it's going to tell you that sine of an angle that you stick a negative sign in front of is equal to negative times the sine of that angle and that's just a trig identity that you can prove to yourself is true by looking at the graph of the sine function, but if you forget it, it's right here in your calculator. All right, uh, lots and lots of things this guy's useful for. Let's go in here and play a little bit more. Let's say you're forgetting a little bit uh, the double angle formula for sine. Uh, in other words, sine of two times an angle, and instead of x, you can use any variable you want. We'll just go ahead and stick uh, theta in there. That maybe that's a little bit more familiar to you. Sine of two times theta. How does that reduce down? It's going to be 2 times the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. This is a double angle formula uh, identity that um, a lot of you have memorized, maybe some of you don't. Uh, you could play around with it and do it with cosine, it doesn't really matter. It knows what they all are, 2 times theta. And you'll see, uh oh, looks like I forgot a parenthesis. Make sure and close your parentheses. And you'll see how this one's a little bit different. So cosine of 2 times the angle, it gives you the, uh, the other guy right here. All right, let me clear this off. We'll go back in and add trig expand function down there again. And we'll go and play a little bit more. Let's put cosine of, let's go and add some things. What about um, two angles, A uh, plus another angle B. This is another uh, identity that's out there. And two angles that you add together, what would be the trig identity there when it's wrapped up in a cosine? you get cosine A times cosine B minus sine A times sine of B and you have to go up there to kind of look at it. Now if you change this guy right here to a sine, which you can easily do, make sure and take out the extra parentheses that it put in there, 
uh, then you'll see that it looks really similar, but it's not quite the same because you have a, a plus sign here. So these things are really hard to keep in your head. In fact, I don't really have these trig identities memorized. I usually look them up in a table or in a book. But if you're stuck on a test and you don't have a table or a book, it's really, really nice. Now, you can, you can put numbers in here. There's no problem with that. You can stick a pi in here. The calculator knows what the value of pi is. So if you're trying to do some simplification of pi plus, let's take b out and just make it a little more realistic and say you're trying to simplify this guy. Well, what you would do by hand is you would apply uh, you would apply this identity here and then you would evaluate pi uh, in every place where it falls here in, in your identity. In other words, here it's a plus b and here we have pi plus theta. So everywhere there's an a, there's going to be a pi and you would have to evaluate all that. So the calculator can do that for you. It's going to simplify everything down and the answer you're going to get is negative sine of theta. Um, it's a great test. It's a great way to, uh, to test yourself. It uh, also works with differences of angles. Let's go ahead and put, uh, let's go put um, A minus B, A minus B, right? So there we go. We've got, we've got that guy right there. Okay, so really, really useful function, T expand. Now the next thing we want to go and look at is T collect, trig collect. So if you have something that isn't working out for you when you use your t-expand then go and check out t-collect it works a little bit differently inside of t-collect you're going to be putting things that are basically multiplied together that's basically the difference when you use t-expand it's going to assume that you have some trigonometric function and you're adding or you're subtracting something inside like a minus b or a plus b t-collect is going to assume that you're multiplying things together so the, the really useful guy here would be something like what if you forget the trig identity for um, sine squared of an angle because inside of here that would be sine of theta times sine of theta and you would hit enter and it's going to go ahead and and put your identity out like that uh, what if you wanted to do to sine times cosine times cosine of let's go ahead and change it from theta let's change it to another angle just so you can sort of see how it plays out so one of the angles we call a theta the other one we will call it a and you'll see it thinks for a second and it goes off and, and produces something that's you know pretty large something that you could use on a test to simplify something like that and of course I haven't used tangent yet but tangent works just fine too let's say it's sine of theta times tangent theta uh, so let's go do tangent of theta and we'll close that out and then we get another nice simplification and again just to reiterate inside of here you could do something like theta minus you know pi you can put real calculations inside of here shift the angle around a little bit if you want and the calculator will go and simplify that uh, as it can and in this case it doesn't really matter because when you shift uh, tangent by pi it doesn't really affect the answer but if we go in what if we shift it by pi over 2 I wonder how that will change it let's shift it by pi over 2 and you get quite a different answer which we can see right here so T uh, collect is usually used when you're trying to multiply things you see how we have two things multiplied sine times a tangent or sine times a sine or sine squared or something like that when we did T uh, expand inside of here we had like sine of a plus B or sine a minus B or sine of negative a or something like that so the rule of thumb really is T expand is mainly going to accept arguments with some kind of angles that are added together or something like that on the inside and um, and the other guy uh, T collect is going to be generally when things are multiplied together but like I say you might forget that a few months from now you might forget exactly how it's going to work so if you're trying to do a simplification or if you're trying to remember an identity really and truly just try to stick it into one of them and if you don't get a simplification or if it doesn't look familiar to you then try it in the other one and uh, it's the calculator is only going to give you a legal answer back so it's it's just going to depend on what you're trying to do um, how far are you trying to go down there so I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. It has pretty tremendous uh, trig simplification abilities in here, which is really, really neat because we all have forgotten trig identity at some point or another. So you really have them all in your back pocket here. Make sure and exploit that. It can really save you a tremendous amount of time.